there I am. <laughs> I was just, as I was saying, I was just thanking the district uh, and Bonnie King for uh, supporting this collaboration. Uh, we had support with the transportation on the field trip, as well as uh, supporting me coming into uh, Dr. Birnbaum's class uh, several times uh, over the course of uh, a couple years. So without further ado, uh, we're going to play three videos. The first video is a summary of the project, so that will probably answer a lot of questions. We worked with uh, two sections of students uh, this uh, past year, 2017, spring and fall. Uh, the Pollution Prevention Institute, uh, based at RIT, that's a New York State organization that provided the grant for us to uh, collaborate on this project. So um, that might be a, kind of a, some, some striking facts in that video. 80% of the samples that the spring uh, 2017 students uh, took from the Fishco Creek, that was uh, Gene Van Pelt Park in Glenham, New York. 80% um, of those samples contained uh, some kinds of microplastics. So, and this is a pervasive issue that is being found uh, throughout watersheds in the United States and around the world. Um, and the next video will uh, talk a little bit more about it. Do you get hungry or thirsty? Do you need to carry stuff, but wonder how you can hurt the earth in the process? Disposable plastic may be right for you. Is convenience more important to you than the health of rivers, oceans, animals, or their own human communities? Disposable plastic could be the answer. Why plastic? It lasts forever in bite-sized particles until the end of time. All the plastic that has ever been created is still with us, whether floating in oceans, in bellies of plankton, fish and birds, or flowing through our home tap water. Plastic lasts so long, it has entered our food chain in baby food, pastas, soups, and rice. Mmm, delicious polyethylene tariff phthalate. Side effects may include destruction of the marine food chain, leached harmful chemicals into our diets and bodies, giant garbage patches in oceans, millions of dollars in annual Hudson River debris cleanup. Ask your doctor if plastic is right for you. After all, what is the alternative? Using reusable bottles? Bringing your own shopping bag, avoiding disposable plastic, using glass food containers, not littering, think before you buy. Come on, act now, and as a bonus, you can perform regular trash cleanups on local streams and highways. It's weekend fun for the whole family. Plastic for today, tomorrow, and ever, 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 and ever. I'd like to ask, actually, 
at this time that the students come and join me up here because they're responsible for so much of this work. We have one more video for you, but I'll have you guys come on down here. We have uh, several students here. It's been an absolute pleasure working with them, collaborating with them. I just saw that last video. They come at these issues um, from their own unique perspective, and they have their own ideas about how to communicate these issues. And that was part of our grant, so a big part of it was finding out what's going on in the creek. But the other second half of it, which these students were responsible for, was communicating that issue and how do we spread this, the word about this. Um, and you know, you've seen posters of things, or you know, the, the state might release some uh, information about things here or there. Um, but th I think that when it comes from students themselves, you get a really unique perspective and, and um, kind of uh, outside the box thinking, let's say. So this next video is a great example of that. Turn up the volume a little bit too. questions if you guys want to just come up right around the mic um, if anybody has questions for me or them or anything else about the project um, we put these videos together we're gonna to post them online and uh, we also have some posters that they made I don't have time to show you everything but um, Amy is gonna follow up with posting those so everybody can see those but please if you have uh, any questions or comments uh, bottles when you return them for deposit, what do they do with those bottles? Are they safely? That's a great question. I don't know if I know the answer to that question. <laughs> um, my guess is that they, they would probably enter the recycling stream um, and go back. They, they would at least they uh, they would reuse the materials, I would think. Same thing with the plastic bag? I, I would think so. I think it's a, yeah. I think you can get paid, you can make money recycling. Uh, most of the recycling actually is done in China these days, so we, we kind of ship our recycling to China. But you can you can make money uh, doing that, so that's why you can get that five cent deposit. Thank you. Yes. Um, first, sorry, first thing I was just going to say uh, there was just news uh, in Sunday's paper paper yesterday that China is no longer go accepting recyclables. So. Uh, They've pretty much said, let the, let the rest of the world keep their own garbage. <laughs> They've had enough, just like our students. <laughs> this is good. First I'd, like, first, I'd like not to talk that loud. Um, first, I'd like to commend you from a communications and a marketing standpoint, because what you did was you told people what to do instead. You made a positive suggestion. I have no idea what this is doing. Recorded, so we have to use the microphone. Okay, can, I, can you hear me? That's yeah. better. All right. Um, so the, that's the first thing is that I really liked that you made these positive suggestions instead of just saying that something is bad. But I really have to ask you a question: Were you really having a good time in that video, or are you just all really good actors? We had the absolute best time making that video. It was so much fun. <laughs> oh yeah, we spent a lot of time writing all those lyrics by our 
ourselves and it was just kind of like one of those crazy ideas that no one expected and then we ran with it. So cool. It was a fun collaboration. Thank you. Mr. Sunshine. Great right, American Idol is coming back in court. <laughs> they canceled the show and then they brought it back, maybe because of you guys. Um, I'm just curious, all the data that you collected, what did you do with it? Did you send it to the state? Did you send it into the federal government? What did you do? Because some of the results that you know were kind of shocking. Well, I shouldn't say shocking, but once you actually, you know, put it all together and actually see, you know, the damage that's being done, you know. What, if there is a next step, what would your next step be? Well, the data that we took uh, specifically, I wouldn't say it's, um, like say, publishable quality data. Um, the students did a great job and they were guided by a Clarkson professor uh, as well as uh, the water scientist from Riverkeeper at the time. Um, but it's not necessarily like a litigable quality uh, data. But um, it certainly is something of a growing concern and something that you can measure um, and see under a dissecting microscope. Um, so you, would, you might have to be a little bit more systematic with the way things were logged and probably take pictures of a lot of uh, the stuff if you wanted to publish that. But I want to refer people also to the work of um, Ian Kraut at Marist College as an undergraduate who has been measuring uh, microplastics with a much more sophisticated system in uh, Dutchess County tributaries of the Hudson River. Um, and he has, he's pr produced a great report on this. I can send this to Amy as well. Um, but he, what he does is actually put the water samples through a process where it strips out all the organic matter from the debris. And so then he weighs the amount of plastic in the sample uh, itself. And he has a kind of sophisticated series of machines to do that. Um, so his work is publishable. Uh, and that is something that I think people are taking more and more notice of. So, um, so I definitely would recommend that work. Um, he did four tributaries in uh, Dutchess County. Uh, Fishkill Creek had the third highest amount by weight. So, um, so that's another great reference. Um, so our work, well, you know, uh, certainly substantial. It, it's a little bit more on the anecdotal side than the sort of research publishable quality. But I think it's also it's a it's a great demonstration for the students of the scientific method of field work itself um, and what it's like to um, go out in your own backyard and, and test one of these kind of cutting edge issues. Microplastics is a very recent issue uh, in the Zeitgeist. Great, great job, everybody. For students, for students, what do you plan to do with the study that you performed to educate your classmates? Thank you, 
Madam President. First of all, I want to say this is a great job. You, you, kids, you students did a fabulous job. Actually, the whole team did a fabulous job, in my opinion. I certainly hope it wasn't too cold when you went out there and did your uh, collection. I just, <laughs> it was summer. No, that was Mr. Lumi who said that. But uh, I would, I mean, at this, from what I see, you really have got, you've got a great baseline. You have a snapshot of a river or a stream at a particular point uh, and whatnot. And I would hope that going forward, I would like to see going forward, let me rephrase that, that maybe next year, I don't know if it's, if it's done on a monthly or an annual basis, take a look and see what the trends are. Uh, maybe over a, a two, three, five, ten year period. I think that might show something as well. Thank you. So just a quick statement. I mean, I am Dr. Birnbaum, Dr. B, and I want to thank everybody for letting us come tonight. Um, last year's class got to go to Global Foundries and also work with the Beacon Institute, which was amazing. This was a one-year grant from January to December, and so that's why this year's class got to be involved as well. So um, I do hope that the district will help support us in getting back into Global Foundries, working uh, again with the Beacon Institute. So every uh, group of kids who comes into the AP Environmental Program and other classes as well has the opportunity to do some real citizen science. Thank you. Thank you very much. Excellent work. Just, I'll, I'll mention more, but I want to recognize Jennifer Garrison for a national board certification. Yeah. I'll, 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 Dr. Bond, <laughs> if you can come <laughs> Thank you, Superintendent Carrion. Good evening, Board of Education members of our community. Tonight is an opportunity to provide thanks to individuals, uh, 12 of them, who have served the Wappinger Central School District extremely proudly for more than 25 years. Quite an accomplishment. Let's give all of them a round of applause, please. And as a token of our appreciation, our uh, Assistant Superintendent for Business, Ms. Crandall, will be providing each here this evening and those that couldn't make it a nice token of our appreciation, a gold pin. So I'm going to take a brief moment just to introduce the individuals and talk a little bit about their tremendous accomplishments here at Wappingers. First, we have Christine Blake. School Monitor Wappingers Junior High School began her career with us in September of 1992. Uh, she's also been assigned to Fishkill Elementary. Christine Blake, congratulations, 25 years of service. <laughs> Next we have Terry Brothers, Special Education Teacher at Fishkill Plains. She began her career with us back in 1992. Also taught at Evans, Gayhead, Sheaf Road, and Vassar Road. Terry Brothers, thank you for 25 wonderful years. <laughs> Janet Galazio, physical education teacher, Brinkerhoff, beginning her career back in 1992. Also taught at Evans, Gayhead, Sheaf Road. Wappingers, hold on one second. <laughs> Let me do a redo. She taught in Myers Corners, Gayhead, Van Wyck, and John Jay. Congratulations, Janet, for your 25 years of service to the Washington Central School District. And I do believe that Deborah Helmsurich, school monitor from Van Wyck, is here. Are you here, Deborah? Yes. Deborah, could you please stand up? Could you please approach the individuals in the front row and receive your pin for 25 years of exceptional service? And Van White and Fishkill Plains also began your career with us back in 1992. Thank you very much. <laughs> Kathleen Jones, teaching assistant, Gayhead, began her career as a teacher aide in 1992, became a teaching assistant in 1995, has also worked at Brinkerhoff. Congratulations, 26 years of service. Congratulations, Kathleen. 
Melissa Jones, assistant to the school lunch director, began her career here in 1993. Melissa, thank you. 25 years of service in Washington. <laughs> Scott Caker, head custodian Brinkerhoff, began his career in Wappingers in 1993. Became a head custodian in 2002. Has also worked at Gayhead. Scott, thank you. 25 years of great service. Adrian Lombardo, teaching assistant, Gayhead. 1991, started as a school monitor. 92, a teacher aide. 95, a teaching assistant. Also worked at Fishkill Plains and Myers Corners. Adrian, congratulations. 26 years of service to the Wapenger Central School District. And I do believe we have Rebecca Morano here. We do. And I know firsthand she's absolutely outstanding. Started in 1992 as a teacher aide. 1993, health aide. 1995, teaching assistant. She's worked at John Jay, Van White, Brinkerhawk, and Oak Grove. Ms. Morano, congratulations. Thank you for your 25 years of service. Lynn Passarelli, I think Lynn's here as well. Lynn, come on down. School monitor, Myers Corners. 1992 started her career with us. Has always been in one distinct building. That is an accomplishment and it speaks to the continuity that exists in your dedication. Myers Corners, thank you, Lynn. 25 years of service. <laughs> Elaine Stafford, teaching assistant, Fishkill Plains. Started her career with Wappingers in 1992 as a part-time teacher aide. 1995, part-time teaching assistant. 2007, teaching assistant. Worked at Gayhead, Kinry Road in Evans. Elaine, thank you for 25 years of service. And last week, we conclude with Joyce Walk. Teaching assistant, Kinry Road, started her career. Teacher aide in 1992. Moved on to a teaching assistant in 1995. She's also worked at Fishkill. Congratulations, Joyce. 25 years of service. A round of applause, everyone. Thank you for all of your dedication to our students within the Washington Sector School District. Congratulations and thank you. And please wear those pants proudly. It's quite an accomplishment. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Bobby. for citizens to address the Board of Education. The open meetings law does not require that citizens be allowed to participate and speak at Board of Education meetings other than public hearings. The law specifies that the public has a right to attend board meetings except for executive sessions. The procedure for public comment is outlined in Board Policy 1230, Citizen Participation. A total of 30 minutes is set aside for public comment at the beginning and end of the meeting. The maximum time allowed for any one speaker is three minutes. Public comments at the beginning of the meeting are limited to items on the agenda. Persons who wish to participate in the public comment portion of the meeting must state their name and a specific topic about which they wish to speak. As speakers must limit comments to issues appropriate for public discussion, compliments or complaints about student discipline, specific student issues, or personnel should not be addressed during public comment. Speakers who wish to discuss specific student or personnel matters are encouraged to speak to the superintendent or other appropriate administrator after the conclusion of the board meeting. Interruption of board discussion is not permitted. In the interest of civility and respect for different points of view, outbursts from the audience, applause, or other types of disturbances or disruptions are not permitted. Under no circumstances will booing be tolerated. The Board of Education recognizes its responsibility to hear and respond to public comment. As stated in Board Policy 1230, the Board is not able to answer questions at the meetings, but welcomes your statements. 
Any questions from the public should be submitted through the use of the public comment form, which may be obtained online or at the desk with the district clerk. Responses will be provided within two business days on the district's public comment responses page so that everyone may receive the information. Hello, I'm Marie Johnson. I'm speaking on agenda item 7.01 regarding the plant intro for plant science, possible class that you're looking to enter. Um, from the layout of the course, it has some amazing aspects known for both science and for the 4-H capacity. There does appear to be some hands-on for the students during this program. And in so looking at this as a John Jay only, I am wondering if this facility will have the amount of space to do this or if it will need off-campus space. The two ways that I see laid out in the course is hydroponic and soil-based. Both of these methods require a lot of space. I am wondering if you are planning on utilizing some of the space at Orchard View to accommodate this type of class. Some of the things that are needed throughout is the lighting, is lighting, is conducted of said hands-on along with the heating and cooling, dehumidification, humidifiers, water qual quality, reverse osmosis, purified water, um, what soil mediums are going to be used, times between feedings, because both require uh, very constant, so if you're doing any hands-on, it needs to be looked at closely. Um, in regards to the hydroponics, you also need additional to where you build them, um, how much of the cost, the different types of meters for testing, along with the um, total dissolved solvents and the electrified conductivity. Um, you'll also need to have how the systems would be cleaned, would they be per student or the class size, um, for the growing, and what would be used to control this light, because everything regarding this is all light controlled on both of those options. And we'll be able to get extra funding from the state or federal government to offset a lot of these costs because it is quite expensive. Thank you. I'm uh, Pat Hancock. I teach science at John Jay, and I'm here also for agenda item 7.01, new course proposal on plant science, and I'm hopefully the guy that's going to be teaching it. <laughs> um, I have two major goals. Can you give goals. us one second so that we can raise it, hmm? the volume? So. Oh, not loud enough? Or be, be closer to it? There you go. Okay. Thank you. Um, Two major goals uh, for the course. Uh, there's not much plant science in the current biology curriculum. It, it's uh, slowly sort of gone by the wayside. Um, you know, growing up, I had a garden. My uncle had a garden. And I did a certain amount of farming all through high school, through college, worked on dairy farms and so forth. Learned an incredible amount just by raising food, watching stuff grow. Um, so goal number one to the broader student population is to have a science credit available where they are making a direct connection between the science that's being taught in class and how it's applied. Uh, you made some real world comments about the environmental project. This is sort of the same idea. Um, I think it makes the science more real, you know, if, if they can use it for something. Um, it matches up quite well with the next generation science standards. Uh, it matches up pretty well with our mission statement. Uh, four of the words that jump out at me are empower, competencies, passions, community. Um, all of these things I think will come through in the course. Uh, we did get a $5,000 grant from Cornell for uh, startup money, which I think will go a long way toward uh, defraying the cost. Uh, the other, well, let me back up just a second. Uh, in addition to doing the, you know, growing stuff at school, 
doing lab work at school. The hope is to get some uh, field trips in to some of the local farms, greenhouses um, uh, in the area. Uh, you know, when I was growing up, dairy farming was the big thing in Dutchess County. Of course, that has fallen by the wayside. We've gone from an excess of 300 farms to less than 30. But while all these houses are being built, now we need nursery stock, we need flowers, and now there's this movement for local uh, produce. Um, and our kids, I think, uh, ought to be a part of that. Goal number two is a little further out there. Uh, a subset of the students that I hope enroll in this class uh, could establish an FFA chapter. For those of you that don't know, that's Future Farmers of America. Uh, not that we're looking to turn everybody into a farmer, but it's a great organization, it's a national organization um, to establish leadership skills and build confidence. Thank you. Are you gonna be able to hear me? Yes. Much better. <laughs> Got some documents here for you if you'd like to have them. There's just one copy of each, but I'll give them to you afterwards. I'm here in support of the plant science curriculum. So what is your first impression of a farm? Cows, corn, and coveralls, right? All right. Okay, that's fine, but today's farmers are doing far more than just farming. They are businessmen and women. They have marketing skills. They have business plans. They are CEOs and small business owners. They embrace technological change, utilize advanced planting methods, and are environmental stewards of their soil and water resources. They have skill sets that many of us will never have, and we need more of them. Good evening, my name is Jennifer Fimble. I'm an agricultural resource educator for Cornell Cooperative Extension here in Dutchess County. I am also the Dutchess County Agricultural Navigator. I'm here tonight to support the implementation of a plant science curriculum and the foundation for an extracurricular FFA program. Dutchess County has an agricultural and farmland protection plan and encouraging young people to become involved in agriculture as an opportunity for them is one of our goals. This program falls in line with what is happening around the county right now. Pine Plains has had, has had an agricultural program and a success, successful FFA for many years. Dutchess County BOCES now has an agricultural program featuring veterinary science with more to come and the beginning of an FFA program. Dutchess Community College is currently working on an agriculture and food science track in their curriculum Columbia Green Community College is also working on an agribusiness curriculum. We also have the Poughkeepsie Farm Project, the Green Teens Program in Beacon, and most recently the purchase of Scrap Creek Farm by Marist College, which will add to their experiential learning process. Agriculture in Dutchess County and beyond holds opportunity for just about any student, from summer jobs throwing bales of hay, scraping manure with a skitter, feeding horses, tractor safety certification through our 4-H program, flying drones over acres of crops looking to pinpoint fertilization needs, to identifying invasive insects, techies to teach and repair the GPS modules in farm equipment, and of course researchers. There is also a need for mechanics to work on tractors, entrepreneurs to fill gaps in infrastructure such as distribution, storage, and food development. And we need butchers, welders, milkers, landscapers, and greenhouse employees. The FFA program, like 4-H, as a leadership and life skills building component as part of their process. Public speaking, parliamentary procedure, job interviewing, and team building are just a few examples of the skills developed using agriculture as a common vector. I thank you for your consideration this evening, and I hope for your full support and implementation of plant science curriculum and the foundation for an extracurricular FFA program. anyone else who wishes to speak at this time <coughs> seeing no one 5.02 communications announcements received by the Board of Education oh wait a minute mr. Carrion wishes to speak because I see some of the members of the professional uh, um, the curriculum writing committee that are here and they spoke of the course um, I would recommend if we can just go to new business 7.01. Therefore, if the board has any questions, 
we can actually ask those questions right now and improve the course. All right, do we have a motion? Yes, a motion. Okay, Mrs. Karras, second. Mr. Sinai, discussion? that the Board of Education does hereby approve the following new courses for the 2018-2019 school year as detailed in memos provided from the Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction to the Superintendent of Schools. And I guess I'll read that. Business Department, Computer Game Design, Mobile App Development, Science Department, Intro, Plants, Agriculture. Okay, do we have a motion now uh, to, yes, Mr. Galetta. I make a motion that we, we approve these uh, courses. Okay, second. Mr. Lumia, all those in favor. Uh, wait, we need discussion right now. We're going to have discussion and presentation, I believe. Yes, Mr. Slowshower. I know uh, during the comments and in our packet, uh, the course did receive a grant, and then moving forward, it looked like a line item, uh, roughly about $1,500 uh, for the year to keep the course going. What is that covering? Is that uh, stipend for the uh, for the teachers, or is that funds that are going to be needed, let's say, for um, any research done outside of school? Do we know yet, or how do we come up with just that number to keep the course active on a yearly basis? Yes. Yeah, so the estimated uh, cost will be on any needed soil, any seeds, uh, the plantings uh, to go. Um, into the running of the course. The grant will be used to purchase the items that are uh, permanent that are needed for the course, uh, but the rest is just a rough estimate. I have uh, Mr. Panzer here and Pat Hancock if they would like to add any additional information about how the additional funding uh, will be spent in case I miss anything. But most of it is for, uh, the grant will cover the startup course with the permanent equipment, and the yearly will be on soil and seed for the consumable materials. Um, the pots that uh, will be needed for things that you need each year to run the course. And obviously we can continue to apply for grants and seek donations to continue this program, correct? Yes, that is correct. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Cardwell, did you, uh, did you wish to make presentations on these two courses before we ask more questions? Or? No, there is not a presentation, uh, but I do have the directors here um, to assist in any questions that you may have. Thank you. Were there any other questions about the plant science program? And then after that, perhaps the business courses, the computer courses. Mr. Sinai? I still don't know how to turn this on. I actually am very impressed with the course. I'm surprised that there is no plant science. And since uh, without food, we can survive. If it was up to me, I mean, computer gaming, who cares? But this is a must. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Other question? Uh, yes, Mrs. Goodman. I just want to comment on both. I know we're only talking about one, but what both have in common is that they are hands-on and that they reach students at a tremendous range of interests and abilities. Um, you had me at hello. I mean, it was, I thought it was a great both, both were great presentations, so thank you very much. Mr. Rubin. Thank you. Uh, just a, a quick question. I think uh, on the intro to uh, plants and agriculture, and I think this is a uh, great program. I'd like to, uh, hopefully it'll be continued. But to talk about the $1,500, um, probably for next year or so, an estimate. Now, um, I, would, I would 
Is there any uh, thought of how many people, maximum number of people, uh, students that could take this course? Because I'd imagine $1,500 go to be spent differently of 10 students versus, say, 100 students sign up. Uh, so I'm just wondering, is there any uh, thought for uh, maximum court, uh, participation? We did not discuss the maximum number. Uh, we have Pat, Con Pat Hancock, who is currently uh, the teacher that will be teaching it. So we are looking at right now uh, the maximum of five sections. We do not anticipate that. It's really going to be generated on student interest. Um, I'm anticipating hopefully two sections of the course. Thank you. Mr. Hancock. Yeah, the only thing I the only thing I would add is, uh, of course, the consumable items that we use from year to year, how much of that we purchase depends on how many kids are in the course. So the 1500 is a ballpark. Right. Are there any other questions? Mr. Lumia. Just a quick question. I know that uh, Mr. Sinai made a comment about computer, this computer game design being uh, not that important. I th in the contrary, I think it's extremely important so could you please, for the benefit of the board, describe the importance of having a course on computer game design? Yes, and for this I'm going to ask if Amy can go to the microphone. Uh, she has worked uh, diligently with the business department, specifically um, her uh, TCs, and making sure that these courses uh, fill in the gaps of our current computer programming courses that are offered um, in the math department. Terrific. Thank you. So I'm very excited about these classes because differently than the programs that we currently have in the science department with um, computer programming one and two, this is uh, casting a wide net to um, all of our students, um, particularly the, the, those who are not represented in our current programs, um, females and, um, and you know, our other students who tend not to be the computer type that they're so <laughs> um, So specifically, uh, we are gearing these courses um, specifically towards our ninth graders and we feel that it will provide them a foundation um, that's rich, um, it follows the work that they would have done and, and started in the innovation room, working with the coding that they're doing there, and now continuing it with some, some coursework to follow that. Then students <coughs> could continue with the computer programming one and two, or um, again, there's the, what we hope to have is be coming back here next year and, and looking at an AP computer science principles. But basically, what the, what the designers of the course did, Jocelyn Humphreys and Rob Wayman did a wonderful job putting the course together and, and really looking at um, what we currently offer and trying to find something to um, reach a different audience. And, and we really feel that this will do that. So differently than for those that do know computer programming, I don't, but I can speak a little bit about it. Um, it's not the syntax, it's not the semicolons and commas and brackets, this is drag and drop. Um, so it, it is more about the creativity that's involved and um, what you want your user to have on that experience. So having these two courses is in tandem, the way that they are designed will give the students the opportunity to know what's happening on the back end, but then going to the mobile app, if they choose to go forward, which we would anticipate they would, in, and why it's appropriate for business is the monetizing of, of a mobile app. Yeah. This is good. How many students do you anticipate taking these courses? Well, we would, we would love to have many take these courses. I wouldn't be surprised if you did. I think it's a brilliant idea. Well, it, the, the great news is uh, we presented these to the guidance counselors this past week, and um, particularly our eighth grade counselors said, could you, do you think you could offer five sections? Because I think we could do that. So um, I, I, I'm very excited, and I think these are always um, great thinking problems that we have. Mm -hmm. But um, for those of you that hear me talking all the time about my department and, and what we're doing in the business department, we're growing, and I love that we're growing and the work that we're doing. And I want to congratulate you on making the business education department so relevant and up-to-date and technology-oriented. I think it's hugely important that we reach kids where they are, not where we think they should be. 
So I think I just commend you on this very much. Thank you. Thanks. Mr. Sinai. <laughs> just so I don't know what it's about. Of course, a computer technology. Just, see, just for the record, just for the record, I'm all for computer science, but computer gaming is a totally different animal. They just have, right? I just want to be for the record. Well, I'm again, this is no, no, I'm not saying you don't do it, but I would, if I had the choice between plant science and computer gaming, personally, I think people playing too many games. That's what I have to say, but I know what computer no, science is. Thank you. Not games. I know there was a question regarding how many kids will be interested, but I think start. I know they have the uh, family coding night at Vassal on February 15th. So I, uh, as the years go on, by the time they get into eighth and ninth grade, there'll be a lot more kids uh, in that course by starting them out early. And it's a great idea having kids start out early, and also have the parents participate. So when the kids come home with homework and different assignments, they can work on it as a team. Thank you. Mr. Rubin. Thank you again. I also think that this is a great, great thing. I would just hope that uh, in the budget development process that other programs don't suffer as a result of this new program being implemented. I mean, if the programs have no participation, obviously you're going to consider removing them, but I would just hope that this becomes part of the enrichment of the district office to others and not uh, something's not sacrificed because of that. Reading through the curriculums for these different courses, I wanted to take them, so I think they sound really good and very interesting, and I'm sure many students will be interested also. Thank you. That goes for both of them, both the plant science and the computer games. <laughs> I'd have to take the computer games before I could consider about mobile apps. So. <laughs> Maybe when I can figure out how to correct problems on my own computer, you know, <laughs> be good. All right, uh, any further questions or discussion? All those in favor of approving these courses? Unanimous. All right, we're returning to the regular order of the agenda since we only moved one item. 5.02, communications announcements received by the Board of Education. Uh, first of all, I'd like to ask for a moment of silence for John Erickson, a former district employee. Galetta. I just want to uh, let everybody know that it's going to be a PTA council meeting here uh, next Tuesday night, January 30th, uh, starting at 6.30. The, the council meetings have, the, the format of the council meetings have changed a bit this year. Uh, usually there's a, a short 10, 15 minute meeting followed by a, a workshop. This following next week is gonna be a, a parent workshop on the new science standards. Is that, is that right? Yeah, you got it. Very good, thank you. Mr. Lumian. I also want to have a moment of silence for Ms. Mr. Bro's uh, mom, she passed away today. <laughs> the superintendents uh, the thunder whatever I'd like to congratulate uh, Ms. Jennifer Garrison for obtaining her national board certification I don't know what you were going to say but I didn't realize you were going to say it 
I, along with President Kellen, Vice President Rubin, and Mr. Odom, attended the induction ceremony of students into the RCK Italian Honor Society. Congratulations to all students inducted. As you may know, in order to participate or to be a member of the, of the society, you must obtain at least 88 in Italian, as well as at least 85 in all your other courses. I, along with five other board members, attended the Martin Luther King breakfast. Congratulations to two students from McKissie High School, along with former head of the Sheriff's Department, Wood uh, Anderson, as well as former president of Marist College for the honor they received. Next Thursday, next Thursday at 10 o'clock, there will be an additional capital improvement committee meeting. Hope members of the public can attend. I will say more about that when I, when I report on the uh, capital improvement committee. This is good. Then. I just want to give a quick recognition to the two buildings and ground workers that I saw working on the Wabinger Junior High School windows in the bitter, bitter cold of a couple of weeks ago. I was driving through the junior high school and there they were. So I don't know what their names are, but a salute to them, to Mr. Broas for having such a good department. And thanks a lot for making, insulating those windows. <laughs> Mr. Rubin. Thank you, Madam President. I had the opportunity, I attended the Dutchess County Volusies Facilities Acquisition Committee workshop. Um, I attended the Dutchess County School Boards Association breakfast with the state legislators, and I uh, believe Mrs. Kellen was there, uh, Mr. Carrion, Mr. Zip was there. If I've missed anybody in any of these things, uh, please forgive me. It was inter uh, I want to say that I think that it was great that the legislators were there listening to the entire county talk about their concerns about, it, about the future of education uh, and, how, and the problems that we are encountering, encountering as a district. Uh, Mr. Lumiere mentioned about the MLK breakfast. Uh, John Jay High School had their National Merit Semi-Finalist and Commended Students Award and I got there, I had a personal obligation just to say it just left, but my congratulations go out to all of those students that worked hard for that. Uh, RCK uh, High School had their Future Business Leaders of America induction ceremony. Uh, Mrs. Kellen was there, Mr. Coletta, uh, uh, Dr. Bach, Mrs. Watkins. Again, I apologize if I uh, missed anybody, but my correct congratulations to them. And of course, as, as Mr. Lumio uh, mentioned, uh, the RCK Italian Honor Society induction, my congratulations to those students as well. Thank you. Mr. Sinai. I'd just like to thank the superintendent and the staff that afforded me to meet with them individually. I really, really, I was impressed, but I didn't realize how much work these people do around the clock with the email. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Adams. Thank you. I attended the uh, Captain Street Community Center along with several members of the board, and it was a full house. And although there was only two honoree students, honorees that we didn't have one from our district but we were very supportive and it's very competitive to uh, be able to receive the uh, the award the scholarship award and also attended the uh, Kenry winter concert that was held at the uh, RCK auditorium last week uh, also the rivalry basketball game that John Jay uh, <laughs> Ketchum game was very good very good, and I had the opportunity to sit with the students, and it was very loud, it was, it was fun. I had a great time. And also attended the Italian Honor Society, and speaking with some of the, the students afterwards, it was a correlation between kids that are part of the specialized honor societies and their overall grades. A lot of the kids were looking at uh, Ivy League schools, they were looking at schools to become astronauts, so uh, the Honor Society helps them really propel themselves to get in, into these colleges. Thank you. Mr. Slashow. This is Karat. Uh, just that we had a wellness committee meeting. Uh, oh, can I address that next? Yes. yes. Committee, okay. So, yes, I did attend the uh, Martin Luther King breakfast at the Civic Center. Uh, and other than that, I uh, just wanted to uh, mentioned for the public's benefit that the elective fairs are taking place this week 
for Roy C. Ketchum on Thursday at 7 o'clock and John Jay on uh, Wednesday at 7 o'clock for all high school students and their families. That's really important, and I will try to attend both. Exciting. I attended the Wellness Committee and the Legislative Action Committee. Uh, I know the chairs are going to be reporting on those, so I won't go into detail. Uh, the Future Business Leaders of America Honor Society inductions and the Italian Honor Society inductions at Ketchum, uh, that was also mentioned, and the National Merit Scholars Recognition at John Jay High School, and uh, followed by uh, Mr. Carrion and I also dropped in on the Black Students Club, which was uh, very enlightening, and uh, as, uh, some of our uh, administrators were there speaking, uh, Mr. Thompson and uh, Mrs. G uh, 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 Ruiz Giuliani. Okay, sorry, I <laughs> mispronounced <laughs> it. I, it. I, I know. I always call her Lizette. That's the problem. <laughs> We're friends, so I'm not up on all the things. Sorry. <laughs> and that was there in a different light, and they're, they're wonderful speakers as well as being excellent administrators. Uh, the Martin Luther King breakfast was uh, uh, six members of the board as well as a mem number of members of the central administration attended. And uh, the legislati uh, legislative co um, conference uh, on for the Dutch School Boards Association on Saturday. I'll speak more about that when we get to it. Thank you. Uh, 5.03, committee reports and board representatives. Capital improvement, chaired by Mr. Lumia. Uh, we had a meeting January 3rd. Uh, they attended with Mr. Gross, Mary Johnson, Peggy Killen, Rob Rubin, Eddie Schlossauer, Anthony St. George, Amy Watkins, and of course, Mrs. Zemke, Bill Zemke, our architect. Uh, Mr. Zenke updated on the following status at the 2016 capital project phase one. The sports field of 90% complete, work be completed in the spring. Window replacement at Wapit Junior High. Uh, <laughs> over, over, actually, the people, that's actually one of the projects that the, the capital, they're 95% complete, or maybe a little bit more now. Side payment substantially complete. The contract did not complete that punch list. Electrical work is complete. Myers contracting is complete except for the for credit charge change orders, bringing some money back. Uh, phase two projects are there are the state of hopefully we have to the state of the department ready for review. There's still a list of items that need to be reviewed. Run back architect coordinated with Amoresco to make sure there are no, no duplication of work. The new SAD review procedure starts February 1st. The, school, the Smart School Bond Act is the third project in queue for review, the third project in queue. Hopefully it gets approved. The Judge is sewer delayed due to Board of Health approvals and with the Town Board East Whiskey of the piping from the street to, to the vault has been tested. All testing have passed. Contractors just need to make connections to the school. Mr. Bros requested the hookup connection to be done during the spring break for obvious reasons. The committee has agreed. Ron will hold a meeting with the Wabit Central School staff, the Science Food Service custodians, the maintenance staff, and the Global Foundries to communicate the guidelines from the municipal sewer. The press box and the concession stand is complete. We're ready for close out documents from the contractor. Uh, he gives a list of complete, complete projects as well as an update of other, other projects. The last item that was discussed, which is extremely important, in my opinion, I think in the the committee is our architect wrote a proposal, a proposal 2008 capital improvement budget report and reviewed the s and process and timeline. The committee, seeing a critical importance of these projects, agreed I'm going out for a referendum this May and present all the projects to the public by prioritizing by face and anticipated cost. It was a committee consensus that once the public sees the importance of these projects, they will also want the project to the district to proceed. The committee agreed that educating the public is the key to getting the 2018 capital improvement projects approved. Our next capital improvement committee meeting will be next Thursday. The board invites the public to come to this meeting and get informed on the proposed 2018 capital improvement project that will be presented to the board of, Edu the board of education for discussion and offer for approval. I don't know if Mr. Schlesheimer wants to add anything to that. 
and I would appreciate it, Mr. Slideshow, Mr. Rubin, Mr. Nate Kelly, the President, to add to that what I just said. Just to quickly just elaborate on what our architect has presented uh, to the committee and what we were focusing on with regards to uh, some critical infrastructure repairs. Um, our last capital improvement uh, a bond was more for uh, addressing, I would say, more of student needs in terms of athletics and the arts. Hopefully those things will be done this coming summer. Uh, but the next wave of projects are more from an infrastructure standpoint. Um, and again, it was the consensus of the committee uh, to put together uh, information for the public so that they clearly understand, so that they can make an informed yes or no uh, decision if the full board does decide uh, to put a referendum up uh, for a vote uh, in May. Uh, as Mr. Lumia stated earlier, we are having an additional special meeting next week if community members are available, uh, we, the, the committee does encourage members of the community to please come to these meetings. Uh, it's very important uh, to, uh, for us to share this information with you. If by chance you cannot attend uh, within, I believe, 24 to 48 hours, any information that we do discuss and, uh, excuse me, that is presented at the meeting is available on the district website. We do encourage everybody to please visit the website and take a look at what the committee is working on. Thank you. Mr. Rubin. I'm telling you were there as well, but I would also like to add that this committee, as a committee of the board, okay, so we have uh, board uh, authorization to at least look into things. Uh, we're looking at physical uh, building maintenance and uh, repairs, as you mentioned, Mr. Slashauer, but I think it's also important to mention that we are looking at various projects, energy saving projects, that over the long haul, if implemented, over the long haul it's anticipated could save the district some money. So it's, we're not just, we're looking for the future and we're looking to try and be economical um, for the taxpayer of the district. Just to add, uh, these projects that are being considered to be put up for uh, a vote in May are critical, infrastructure. Our last review by the state, which they do every five years uh, assessing our facilities, they found $99 million worth of projects that needed to be taken care of. Uh, our last uh, capital improvement bond took care of a few of them, but we still have around $80 million of things that need to be done. For many, many years, the district uh, relied on deferred maintenance and as homeowners know if you defer your maintenance you usually wind up with a bigger bill in the end and because things fail the leak turns into from a little hole it could have been patched it turns into as as we found with the roof at Evans it turns out to be replacing the roof the ceiling the floor etc cetera, etc cetera. And those are the kind of projects we're looking at. These things need to be taken care of now before we have uh, worse problems and greater expense on our hands. District-wide safety committee, uh, chaired by Mr. Lokima. Good evening, yes, thank you. Um, the uh, district-wide safety committee met on December, last met on December 13th. Uh, board members there were Mr. Galetta, Mr. Lumia, Mr. Rubin, and Ms. Kellen. Uh, we were uh, uh, meeting in response to the charge given to us at the October 16th Board of Education meeting where we were asked to provide a recommendation from the committee uh, to the question of should we have ambulance services at our building events and uh, sporting events uh, specifically, I think it started with the football games and then we, you know, in, in, in broad sense of most sporting events and after school events, plays, etc. Um, there was a, an attached recommendation in the, um, in, in the uh, in board docs. Uh, we also spoke of after school security. That was another agenda item that we talked about during the meeting. Uh, it, was a, it was a general discussion uh, and there was no recommendations made at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Dutchess County BOCES, represented by Mr. Rubin. Thank you, Madam President. Um, BOCES meetings that I've attended, uh, 
basically routine types of things that any school district goes through, but I would like to say that uh, one of the meetings was the Facilities Acquisition Committee, which I am a member of that, and the uh, BOCES probably hasn't had really any consolidation of, or any project bond, et cetera, on facilities acquisition in probably 50 years. Their alternative high school, which is called Beta, is in a, a building, I think it's off of Route 55 in Poughkeepsie. We've been renting that building, the Dutch and BOCES have been renting that building for over 20 years. It lacks in uh, any types of uh, current things that our school districts have. The building itself is in less than optimal shape and physical condition. So BOCES is looking for the first time in probably 40 or 50 years to see whether or not uh, we can take any of the off-site uh, programs, not just BOCES, but there's a bunch of other things that they have, and consolidate that and bring it into a new, more modern building on their Salt Point campus, and that will lead to efficiencies with other programs that BOCES is operating. Thank you. It will also reduce transportation oh, costs for the district. Yeah. Just yes. another little additional yeah. benefit to us all. The Dutchess County School Boards Association's regular January meeting was canceled because it was a snow day for uh, almost all of us. But on uh, this past Saturday, January 20th, uh, the Dutchess County School Board members and superintendents, uh, many of whom uh, attended, and Mr. Rubin mentioned that before, had a breakfast for our state legislators. Uh, the uh, Assemblywoman Dee Dee Barrett attended, the others uh, sent representatives. And uh, we were discussing the problems that the districts face with state aid. Uh, some of the topics discussed were um, the tax cap, uh, unfunded mandates, and I'm going to let Mr. Carrion add anything if he would like to bring it to your attention at this time. Tax cap. I, I will mention what they were advocating for. The tax cap, unfunded mandates, inequities, special education, um, the, um, I'm, I'm thinking of the people, of the board members who spoke. So, yes, oh, and our um, small, small city schools, the lawsuit that has continued. Um, and the level of foundation aid. So there was a, an attachment to that. So foundation aid was also uh, another item, that, item they were advocating for. Uh, the uh, one uh, representative who wasn't able to be there was Assemblyman Karen Lawler, and he very graciously gave Mr. Slowshower and me a whole hour of his time this morning. So we got to talk to him uh, in person, and I'm going to leave that to Mr. Slowshower because He's chair of the Legislative Action Committee, whose report is next. <laughs> Thank you, Madam President. The committee had met on uh, Tuesday, January 5th. A uh, couple quick announcements. I'm happy to say that uh, two parents from the community have jo joined the committee, so thank you to uh, Ms. Johnson and Ms. Ryan for stepping forward and uh, joining us. Uh, also, all three uh, of our high schools will be represented on the committee, so I'm happy to see that uh, students uh, have participated and uh, very, seemed very excited at our, at our first meeting. We went through several topics, as I mentioned at the last report, uh, and again, just to be repetitive, the committee will be focusing on special education mandates, funded and unfunded, uh, a little bit of what Madam uh, President was mentioning with local politicians and at the event that she had attended. Uh, the committee is going to focus on the effect it's having, uh, especially on all school districts, but especially on our school district with regards to uh, the resources, uh, the repetitive mandates, the overlapping mandates, uh, and kind of just the bureaucracy that exists in the state of New York. Uh, the students are uh, working uh, with uh, the other members of the committee and we hope to have a uh, full board presentation this spring uh, that will be conducted by the students. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, I apologize. And our next meeting is February 27th. Uh, that's a Tuesday at 545. And again, uh, 
members of the public are available, uh, we'd love to have you there. Thank you. The Wellness Committee, chaired by Ms. Crandall. Good evening. Uh, the Wellness Committee met on Tuesday, January 9th at 8 o'clock at the district office. Um, we are held to New York State regulation as to topics that are to be discussed during our meetings. So at this meeting, we were able to discuss um, wellness committee or wellness activities in each of the buildings, which is fantastic. Uh, we see a lot of activity, and if you would like to see what does occur at our buildings, it is posted on the district's webpage under the wellness site. We also had um, a discussion on a New York State Farm to School program grant that Wappinger Central School District in collaboration with Poughkeepsie City School District did receive and some of the great work and education that we'll be doing as part of this two-year pilot program. We will. We are lucky enough to um, really be focusing the pilot program at Myers Corners Elementary School, but we'll be definitely looking to expand it as we move through the process. And we did have a lot of um, conversation about the past success that this uh, program has seen in other districts, and we're very happy and excited as to what we have um, what opportunities we have here at Wappingers as a result of this program. Part of the required information that needed to be shared with the Wellness Committee was discipline, uh, discipline reporting, absenteeism, and testing data. This was provided as raw data to the committee. Um, we're not quite sure what we're supposed to be doing with this information. Uh, New York State has not given us guidance on what exactly we should be doing as a committee, but we are preparing it and uh, making it available to our committee and we will be having discussions in the future. And um, we also provided nutritional content on our, uh, a lot of our foods that are served in our cafeterias and our vending machines as required by New York State. And we will be discussing the annual survey um, to the to, amongst the committee members at our March 2018 meeting. Good. A quick question for the Wellness Committee. Um, I read recently that the Trump administration is rolling back some of the healthy food requirements of the Obama administration. Will that affect um, how we choose our, food, our meals, our foods for students? Well, right now, Wappinger Central School District's Food Service Department is 100% compliant with the USDA. So depending on what levels are, are rolled back. It may have some impact on what our lunches look like, uh, but we have we have prided, our, uh, prided ourselves on being 100% compliant. Um, you know, it, it's difficult. Uh, children don't understand brown rice or brown pasta or chicken nuggets that are a little browner than what you get at home or at McDonald's or wherever they happen to have those items. So we have been transitioning for several years and trying to um, take those steps forward to provide those healthier choices. So as that information comes down from the federal government, we'll definitely evaluate and see and how we move forward with that. Thank you. Thank you. 5.04, board discussion, economic and community development. I believe Mr. Slow Shower, you wish to speak. Sure. Thank you, Madam President, and thank you, Madam President, and Mr. Carrion for making this an agenda item. Uh, just to bring the board a little bit up to speed, and Mr. Carrion can add some comments as well. Um, I had uh, originally uh, initiated this uh, conversation uh, with Mr. Carrion after uh, there was a press conference held in the town of East Fishkill uh, to announce the purchase of part of the Global Foundries property by iReady. Uh, I had noticed that everyone was invited to this press conference with the exception of the school district. Um, I had contacted uh, Mr. Carrion's office, and I think I might have also sent an email to Ms. Crandall, just out of curiosity to ask them whether or not they had received an invitation and if they knew that this press conference was even taking place, and uh, they didn't know. Uh, my next call was to our county executive, to Marcus Molinaro's office, 
and I inquired, I said, why wasn't the school district notified of this press conference, especially with the close proximity to John Jay and, of course, district offices? My concern was taken, and I then received a call from Ron Hicks, who's the deputy executive for economic development. And to my surprise, Mr. Hicks said to me, this is the first time anyone from a school district has contacted me that wanted to be invited to a press conference of this particular nature. Making a long story short, I tried to explain to Mr. Hicks that, again, due to the proximity of the project and the possible impact it would have, because there was some talk and some information put out in the media that there could be a housing component in this project, which obviously would affect the school district. Later on, that's not really what the project was all about, but initially, that's what, you know, that component was made available to the community. I then had a little further conversations with him and explained to him that this is a new board, and I'm not sure what types of school boards he had dealt with in the past, but just based on, you know, the way we conduct ourselves on the Capital Improvement Committee, I got the impression that, not only for myself, but for other members of the board, we definitely have a concern with what's going to go on with large development projects, whether they're residential or commercial, because they're going to affect the school district and the community itself. He was very responsive to what I had to say, and he was willing to schedule a meeting. I said, fine. I contacted Mr. Carrion's office. Let's schedule a meeting. We proceeded to schedule and had a meeting. He indicated to us some of the projects that were going on, different things. I then explained to him my perspective as a board member, what I was looking for, and bottom line is, I felt it's necessary that the school district, quote unquote, has a seat at the table with these types of discussions, and we should be part of the process. And what I mean by part of the process is, if projects are coming in, we're all for economic development, we want to increase our tax base, which is going to increase revenues, which of course is going to help the school district. On the other hand, when you have economic development, as we witnessed at a prior meeting, we also have developers and businesses that have come before this board looking for pilots. And just to let everyone know, a pilot is a payment in lieu of taxes, which means it's a negotiated fee as to what that particular entity is going to pay with regards to taxes to the district and to the town. And again, as we witnessed in a prior board meeting, we had an entity come before us, which in my opinion was not really prepared to present to this board. We had a lot of questions. We've not received any answers to those questions. So in my mind, I said, Mr. X, if it's permissible, and your office and the economic developments of Dutchess County are having conversations with these large entities, we need to be part of this conversation. We need to work as a team or hand in hand, because we want to help grow the tax base. But at the same time, our fiduciary responsibility, in my opinion, as trustees, is that we have to look out for the monies that have to be paid to the district in order to educate our kids, take care of our employees, and so forth. So I expressed to him that if we can have a seat at the table and be part of this process from the beginning, then that way the board and administration would have a clear understanding of what the developer is looking to do, how they're looking to save money, and obviously grow the tax base, create jobs, and so forth. But at the same time, it's not a huge financial impact to the district. So there has to be some common ground. So we know we're getting X amount of, getting $100,000 in taxes for a parcel of land. If a project comes on and there is no pilot, we're going to get $250,000. Yet the developer wants a pilot, so maybe we negotiate, it's $150,000, it's $175,000. Now granted, we are going to lose a little bit of money in the short term, five to ten years, but at the same time, we're also increasing the tax base. And bottom line is we're working together. We don't want to have, in my opinion, an adversary relationship with economic development. There's a lot of things that are going on on the Route 52 corridor. Wappinger, town of Wappinger has these same conversations, and I'm sure town of Poughkeepsie has these same conversations as well. There's a lot of development going on on Route 9 and so forth. So 
my idea was that we would have a again, seat at the table to apologize to be repetitive. And we can participate in the early stages so that when these projects are coming before planning boards and whatnot, we're part of the process. Right? So ultimately, what came out is uh, a, a situation where very, 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 uh, again, sorry, Mr. Hicks was very uh, willing to allow us to participate. He was enthused and excited about the fact that we would be participating because every school district challenges all of the pilots. And again, it's our responsibility. We have to protect everybody here. At the same time, we also have a responsibility for the community. So I'll let Mr. Carrion first add a few things. Ultimately, what we're looking to do, and if the board is comfortable with it, is a liaison with Dutchess County, with the board member, and obviously someone from senior staff that would participate in these conversations, and then obviously report back to administration, report back to the board what projects are going on, what do we anticipate, what are we looking at, what do the numbers look like, how do we factor that into future budgets, and so forth. So that was the idea um, and why I had initiated this with both Mr. Hicks and, I'm sorry, and with Mr. Carrion. So I don't know if anybody has any questions or if Mr. Carrion has anything to add, but I don't know if we need to uh, if it needs board approval or formal approval or not, but ultimately um, the idea is, is that we would be part of the process and we would know what's going on with major projects within the district. What's any project that obviously affects the district with a pilot or anything else that's going on that may increase um, certain pockets uh, within the district, whether it's housing development and again, whether we're going to have uh, students uh, coming into a certain school, and again, we may have a, an overcrowding situation moving forward. Right. Mr. Carrillo. Um, I don't think I need to add to anything that uh, Mr. Slowshower indicated. From an administrative point, when we sat there, Ms. Crandall and I, I think a, a critical piece is that the pilot piece, we know that um, the way the economy can shift and different types of projects and infrastructures that can go up may require not your typical 10-year pilot, but an extension. And that's where we get a vote or we get a say to say yes or no. So from that um, fiscal perspective, I was very interested to see that maybe the conversations should be continuous. Um, but uh, Mr. Slowshower can tell you that. All I kept thinking about was the projects that are coming um, in development and really just thinking about opportunities for our high school students to develop partnerships um, as well. So as I see that if, um, as uh, Mr. Hicks, as he indicated, and what they're projecting for Dutchess County and um, in particular for the Wapinger Central School District area, that it's important to continue to pay attention to it so that we can take advantage of really providing our students with opportunities and options to maybe develop a partnerships um, and, and related to high school courses and, and um, as we speak up in our strategic plan. Mr. Lumi. First of all, I'd like to thank Mr. Slasher for taking the, uh, the initiative. And I, I personally will support nominating you to be the liaison between the district and uh, Opo Junction, Mr. Hicks, and so forth. I think it's extremely important that we have, we have a seat on the board, and more so the information-wise and, uh, and the whole uh, scramble, whatever, the uh, administrative point of view, we said two people, member from the board, of course, the member of the administration, especially when we deal with pilot programs. So uh, I think it's extremely important that I personally nominate him, and I sincerely hope that the rest of the board agrees with that. Do we have a second? I'm making a, I'm making a motion unless it's for the discussion. Okay, well, we, we have to uh, we have a motion to second, then we can have further discussion. Yes. Okay. Um, second. Uh, do we have a second, Mrs. Karat? Is there discussion? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Mr. So I can certainly understand. Um, the desire to be informed of whatever development's going on within the school district and to be up on, on all that. And um, 
and even be involved in, I, I suppose, some conversations. My concern would be that if there, if there's a board member and or a uh, member of the administration at, at the table, so to speak, during whatever meetings, decisions are being made at, things like that, that the developers, the, the, the town uh, representatives might interpret the school district representatives as being there as, as having the authority of the board to approve or, or, or disapprove um, whatever's going on. So in other words, um, if they come out of their meetings and feel like, hey, you know, we got the green light on, on these, Every, everyone was there, everyone's informed, you know, and then they, they come to the board, uh, whatever period down the road, and, and we decide we're not gonna approve that, that, that could be a little bit of maybe false representation. I, I just wanna raise that as a, as a potential concern. Um, I, I don't know if it's how necessary it is that we, like, I guess I'd have to find out more information uh, exactly what meetings you're talking about and, and what you mean by by a seat at the table. That's why I'm, I'm really not interested in, in voting on this tonight. I think we, there's no reason to rush it. We can do this next meeting, the meeting after that. But um, I, I don't know, I mean, I, I imagine there's other avenues to find this information out without necessarily having to be in uh, decision-making meetings. Uh, wait, just a minute, we need to extend the time. Do I have a motion to extend the time? Okay, for 10 minutes. Uh, uh, Mr. Rubin has moved to extend discussion for 10 minutes. Do we have a second? Mrs. Goodman, all those in favor? Unanimous. All right, okay. Um, but I think Mrs. Goodman was next, and then Mr. Lumia, and I had a question too about this. Mrs. Goodman. Um, I, you raise a, I think you raise a, a valid concern, Mr. Galetta, and perhaps it might be better if we have a more formal structure to, to this role of liaison and what we expect. Because the reality is that I know of at least one deal that died and one guy who went bankrupt because two out of three entities approved a pilot and then the district turned it down. Um, and I think that it would be more efficient if we were aware of what was coming down the pike, so that we are not reacting to what the developer tells us at a given meeting. The, the second piece of that is that allows us to be proactive. It is not unusual for a local government entity to demand concessions in return for a pilot. So for example, if we are going, if we're going to have a, an influx of new kids from a large development, then we would ask them, what are they going to do? What, you know, would they be willing to help build an extension or put a new playground onto the elementary school that it feeds into? So there are things that we can think about, Mr. and Superintendent. You were just even raising, just even sitting there in those few minutes about you know arranging partnership activities with our high schools for the new development coming in, for the new commercial developers and things like that. I think those are all wonderful ideas, and they can certainly be extracted. Promises can be extracted as a contract, as part of a pilot agreement. So I think, Mr. Slashauer, you're way on the right track. I'm just wondering, in a matter of this importance, if we should put it on the agenda for two weeks from tonight and discuss how we want to formalize this position, what we want the two people to be doing, and, and what their role is going to be before we make a vote. Mr. Lomia? First of all, I don't think Mr. Schlossauer or the member of the uh, administration has the authority to make any deals. Whatever that is, whatever, whatever deal is going to be made is going to be approved. The first thing has to be presented to the board and has to be approved by the board. I think for information purposes, having Mr. Schlossauer and a member of the administration to be representative to, to see what's going on, I think it's extremely important. So, um, anything else, I think it seems to be the board has to approve anything. And uh, Mr. Slashow, I'm not done, Mr. Slashow has the authority to give any authority to him or to whatever else. The authority comes from the board. So, uh, I'm not concerned at all, but uh, if you want to wait two weeks to make a formal, formal, you know, A, B, C, D, fine, but I don't, I don't know if that's, that's necessary. But if that's what the majority feels, we're ready. Right Mr. Rubin. Thank you. Mr. 
I'm glad I think took the words right out of my mouth. Thank you, Dr. And I actually think that's an excellent idea. Mr. Lumia, just a quick question. Are you talking about really having that observer there as opposed to the liaison? A liaison. Well, we make comments and, uh, and, and report back to the board. Because I actually think that this is a wonderful idea. It probably needs to be developed because it's not really just for the town of Fisco. Mrs. Kellen, I think, might be great for the town of Poughkeepsie. Uh, Mrs. Carafa and Mr. Oda might be at Wappingers. I mean, there's, there's just, there's developments that are happening around. And if we, uh, we should be looking at this in its totality rather than just one, one particular town. And I could just respond. Sure. It's just that it, that's a good point, Ms. Lepoletta, but let me just clarify, just to maybe just put you at ease a little bit, maybe seat at the table. Might have been the best word, the best terminology, or you know, jumping the gun a little bit with it. Really the idea when I say seat at the table is to get it's an information gathering because at that point, if there is a particular project on the table, anywhere within the districts, not just East Fishkill, Fishkill, it's, it's anything that affects the district. So we're talking town of Poughkeepsie and Wappingers in the village and, um, uh, and, and, and East Fishkill and so forth. The idea would be is gathering the information to bring it back to the board, to share the information with the board. What my concern is, is not for us to continue to be in the same situation as before where we're receiving some information two or three days before a presentation. An entity is coming before us. We have a million questions. When I say seat at the table and be part of the process, I look at it, and, and Mr. Hicks kind of agreed, and Mr. Carrion can correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, from, from what, what our exchange was from Mr. Hicks, is he felt it would be better to build a relationship with that particular developer coming into uh, the county because we're with them at the beginning, we understand what their project is, we know what the numbers are, we're looking at the numbers, we have this information for weeks, maybe months ahead of time, and that way we are making an informed yes or no decision based on the project itself and how it's going to affect the school district from a financial standpoint, and even make recommendations. And nobody's, nobody's there to approve or not approve anything, and it will clearly be stated, and, and Mr. Hicks also stated it, that we just be part of the process of sitting around the table discussing the project. There is no formal votes, there's nothing going on. So again, my objective is to get this information as quickly as possible and as early in the process as possible to be part of the process. So ultimately, if the full board does approve this project, we know already what it, what it may cost us, what it may, what the dollar amounts may be to increase revenues. That's really the point I was trying to make. It wasn't from a decision-making standpoint. It was to have the information of this project as soon as we can in the early stages so that we have enough time to really understand. Not everybody on this board is familiar with real estate development deals and, and how those deals are put together. And I think the more that we're educated about this process and why developers need pilots to a degree, and how it affects our bottom line, I think is very important. And the more that we know, I think the better the better we are as a board. Okay, uh, Mrs. Karan. I appreciate your um, comment as well. Uh, these projects roll in in multiples, and so another aspect that to to pass you know to continue what Mr. Slowshire was speaking of is that we not only want to be at the early earliest stages, but we also want to see what other projects are being looked at, what other property is being looked at. So if something's being looked at and it's fish kill, and we're going to be approached, this is only in addition to the normal process of the presentation being made to the board formally by, uh, by a developer. But we also want to know what other things are being uh, addressed in the town of Fishkill, in the town of Wappinger at the same time? Because our, our open developable land is being looked at in uh, many, by many different entities at the same time. And so that was my concern, that I would rather know early on what the county has uh, understood to be true um, in terms of interest. Uh, from a broader base instead of being 
you know, uh, the clerk having a, a request by letter to make a presentation, and then all of a sudden, like Eddie had said, we're, we're hit with three requests for pilots at the same time. So. Okay. Um, Mr. Odoms. I agree with the concept. I just also agree with uh, having just uh, like a, a process in writing. So in case uh, Eddie moves on from being a liaison, somebody else takes over, they know what the process is. So it's just part of having a capital campaign. It's just an external capital campaign, but it's just more of a focus just to be prepared for what's coming down the pipe, as he said. So it's a great idea just to be in writing of how it should how the process should take place. Mr. Sinai, did you have any questions? Okay, well, I had several concerns. I think, first of all, I, I think uh, it's a wonderful idea, uh, Mr. Slowshower, that we should have more contact. Uh, my concern is whether these should be board members or it should be administra uh, people from the administration, uh, from you know, the business office, wh uh, exactly what meetings we would be going to. Um, when I was on the zoning board of the town of Poughkeepsie, I know there were things that came before the planning board, so I'm not sure uh, before it came to the zone. Well, sometimes before and sometimes after the zoning board, usually the planning board, then the zoning board back to the planning board, uh, and uh, then to the sometimes the town board. Uh, I'm wondering if you're envisioning uh, one of us attending those meetings, and it should probably be all four towns if we make it a formal matter. Uh, and as you said, we have two villages, two village of Fishkill, village of Wapitcher's Falls, uh, or whether it would be meeting with um, the, rather than then attending the public board meetings, being uh, part of the planning department's meetings and, and asking them if we could attend that. Uh, I'm wondering about the time considerations for whoever volunteers to do it. Some of us are retired, but most of the board isn't. Jump on board on yes, Mr. Rubin. I don't think clarification needs to be made. I don't know if this board really has the authority to talk about having a trustee and a member of the administration there. I don't think we have the, do we have the authority to? If we, we create the position, we vote on any of the authority. The question that I have is just, do we have the authority to say that there will be a member of the central office staff at these meetings along with a trustee. That I'm not sure of. Can I just say quickly Karen. that um, I didn't think that the conversation was going to be where there was going to be a nomination for a liaison. I thought that this was just to share information. The other thing is that as a superintendent, I've shared maybe um, with conversations I know I shared with um, Mr. Sloshaum and maybe a couple others, that one of the concerns I have is that more than ever, which this is a great thing, that the administration and the Board of Education are really actively engaged in all of the committees. So in my head, I have to start processing and we have to start working more so on a flow chart of communications. So to me, it was just more what, what would this mean in terms of what we're discussing for discussion? Does it become part of someone else's committee already? Do I, do we, I meet with a representative on a quarterly basis with town people so they can share um, you know, with the board member? And so right now, I would welcome just any input on paper um, that you're thinking about, but let, I'll give you an example. If there's information we want to find out, many times I have members in my team and I'll say, why don't you call the communications committee so that they can actually help you funnel how you would get this communication out. Therefore, in my mind, I'm just thinking about all the things that we're doing, all the things that are really happening in our community, in our district. So I, I didn't, when I heard the nomination, respectfully, I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting that that um, Mr. Sloshaw was going to share out. Uh, Mr. For example, Mr. Hicks has already indicated that he would be willing to come to Board of Education meetings and provide updates. Uh, so there, there are a lot of things that we can think about, about how this would work. What does this look like? Is this a new of another committee? Is this part of a committee? Is there going to be an advisory committee? Or is there going to be a liaison? 
all of these things in my head, and I'm, I, I can't speak for the board, but in terms of administration, well, what is all of this going to start looking like to not have a lack of cohesiveness with all of the work that everyone is so actively engaged in and doing in, in our, for our district? Okay, just to okay. address uh, Mr. Just to address Wait a minute, we need to extend time. Five minutes. Motion to extend five minutes. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. Okay, just to alleviate a couple of, of your concerns, Madam President. The idea in terms of meeting and whatnot would strictly be with Ron Hicks's office. It would not be attending planning board meetings and zoning meetings and things of that nature. The idea is the communication, because these large projects are going to go through his office anyway with regards to pilots, is that any type of meeting based on the project would be with him, whether that developer is there. Again, as Mr. Carrion said, Mr. Hicks is willing to come to board meetings and present information. We could make that part of an agenda. I don't know if you want to do that all the time, maybe a quarterly thing, but there's other things that may go on in between you know, if, that he comes. So the idea is, whether it's me, Ms. Crandall, somebody else, okay? It's just, it's a represent, somebody representing the district in this process with Mr. Hicks's office. So that's what I'm envisioning. I'm not envisioning taking time of senior staff to attend planning board meetings at seven, eight o'clock at night or zoning meetings and things of that nature. It's being able to participate but to get information to bring back. We could do it through the Capital Committee, we could do it through communications, whatever everybody's comfortable with, as, as both Mr. Galletta and Mr. Uh, Odoms, if we want to put together some type of process, that's fine. I just think ultimately, and I think we could figure something out, what works best is just a way that we're getting this information when it's happening and not after the fact, and then we have to figure out what are we gonna do. So again, we talk, we're going off in a little different direction, which is good, and it's good conversation, and that's why you know we do these things for everybody to share their ideas, concerns, and, and so forth. Mm -hmm. But that's that that's all I'm looking for is is the district is represented at these things. However, we want to structure that. It doesn't have to be me, but thank you, Mr. Lumia. It could be anybody. We're not. We're just. We're we're. we're engaging with the Office of Economic Development to know that if projects are coming within anything within our district, we're, we're part of the process and we okay. know what's going on. That's okay. all. I'm, I'm gonna have to cut you off because you, uh, your five minutes is an extension is almost up, all right? Uh, okay, okay. I will say All righty, thank you. Um, yes, um, Mrs. Goodman. Okay. We still have a motion on the floor, by the way, so. The motion um, is to do what, exactly? It was to, uh, it was to appoint this, uh, Mr. Slowshower as our liaison. Uh, so if uh, if we want to vote on it, or does Mr. Lumia wish to change or withdraw it? I will do the motion pending, what do you call it, um, uh, to find the, the a process by which. Yeah, that's right. that's what I said that's against you, actually. Right, develop the, the, the first thing I wanna, I wanna say is that communication is two way. That not only do we learn about what these developments are, it does give us an opportunity to express our concern, whatever concerns we might have to the developer about whatever the impact, like, you know, if they want to build where a school is already crowded, for example. You know, we, we need to let them know that maybe they need to come up with a way to address it. But my real question is, what, would, what is the next step to make this happen? Do we have somebody research or come up with a proposal, whether it's going to be a committee or a pair of a central office and a member of the board, what's the next step? Because I'd really like to make a motion that we look into the next step and that we make a recommendation to the board about what should happen next. Okay, uh, who would you like to, uh, to do that research? Uh, do you want Mr. Carrion to uh, pick someone on the administration, or do you want uh, Mr. Slowshower to Well, I, I'm not going to, I, I, I would rather Mr. Slowshower and the superintendent come to an agreement about what they think is appropriate. Um, I, as I said before, I really thought that we were having a general conversation today. 
I would, right now, that may be welcome any input so that I can share with the Board of Education so you can see how respectfully nine different people are thinking. And then that way, um, I, it, it doesn't appear that no one is, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, that we want to get information. It's just a matter of how we get information. Correct. And does it necessarily have to be reinvented? So first, if I can get this week, to get everyone's input so that I can put it together and see what people are thinking of what this okay. process may look like. So as Mr. Odoms did indicate, then that it is true, we, yep. you know, we want you around, but just in case you're not around, the process is there, that, that whatever it is that the okay. process is, whether- What would be know, a reasonable uh, time frame for you? Well, right now, if I can get what people are thinking, for this week, I can get it and share with everyone this Friday. Okay, great. Thank you. Yes. Okay. All right, uh, the time's up, so. <laughs> okay, uh, the time's up, so uh, do we want to leave it there? Or do we want to extend it the time? No, that's fine. All I right. think we had, some, we had good conversation. We don't need to drag it on. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Slosher. Thank you very much thank for bringing you. it up. It's, it's, uh, it's a and thank you, everybody, for your comments good. and your input. And I think we will we'll come up with something that makes sense. Good. Okay, 6.01, consent agenda resolution. Does anyone wish to remove anything from the consent agenda? Mr. Slosher. 6.06, .06, number one. Anything else? Resolve that the Board of Education does hereby approve the following consent agenda items as stated 6.02, 6.03 as amended, 6.04, 6.05, 6.06 except for number one, 6.07, 6.08, and 6.09. Do we have a motion? Mrs. Goodman, second. Mr. Soshauer, all in favor? Unanimous. 6.06, .06, number one. Resolved that the Board of Education does hereby authorize the superintendent of schools to sign the following consult agree to sign the following consultant agreement as stated, which is number one, hoop dreams with Chris Perry. I think I should mention the cost of fourteen thousand dollars. Do we have a motion? Uh, Mr. Rubin, second. Mr. Lumia, discussion. Mr. Sosha. Uh, two things. One, um, the original agreement that came from Hoop Dreams obviously is complete opposite of the consulting agreement that was prepared by our attorney. Uh, I think it's a big concern. Have we, I mean, are we sending our agreement back, for lack of a better term, blindly to them? Or they're aware of their agreement the, was, the opposite of what of how they structured their contract? So their agreement was, pain. sorry, I'm going to keep talking all over you this evening, I'm sorry. Uh, their agreement was received prior to our, the district providing them, Chris Heron, with a copy of our consultant agreement. So our consultant agreement will be the binding contract and we will follow the terms of our consultant agreement. So okay. they provided, up. yes, they've they're seen okay with it. They've seen it, they're okay. I just wanna make sure it wasn't a surprise because no. it's a complete opposite. It took to the end of last week and okay. to get it all together and it's gonna run through BOCES Arts and Ed. So again, it kind of like, it's more, it's metamorphosized through this whole process. So we're very lucky that we can get that as an equal package. Great, and the other thing that, and I'm sorry Mr. Seip is not here, but I would like to thank him um, I'm not sure if anyone out there is familiar with Mr. Chris Heron. Um, any of those uh, sports enthusiast, enthusiastic individuals who watch ESPN's 30 for 30, there was an outstanding short on uh, Mr. Heron. I've seen excerpts of his presentation, his life story, and actually as a hoop junkie, 
uh, followed him during his uh, high school and college career and then afterwards. I think this is an outstanding uh, uh, program that we're gonna have. I encourage uh, everyone in the community if they can come out to see Chris and I also would like to encourage all of our students to please come out and listen to what this man has to say. Uh, if you know anything, Google him and see what transpired in his career and his personal life and where he came from and where he is now. Um, I think this is just, this is, this is a great thing and, uh, and I don't just to mention Mr. Sinai who uh, on several occasions has mentioned his concern with uh, the, ep the drug epidemic and everything else. Um, this is a must-see event, and again, I just want to encourage everybody, if you can come out and see him and listen to Chris, to please do so. And I want to, not here, but thank Mr. Seif, also thank Mr. Carrion um, for working out. By stealing, stealing his night. Well, stealing, not stealing his night, but I think, I think what you did was fair um, throughout the district, and to make this not a, a one school, yeah. uh, event uh, to include both high schools, both, I should say both, all three high schools and the community itself. Whether you go to school in this district or if you live in the district and go to school elsewhere, uh, this is something that affects everybody, doesn't matter where you go to school and where you live and who you are and where you come from. Um, so I want to just thank everybody that was involved in this. I think this is an outstanding event. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Carroll. And I just want to share that um, one of the when meeting with Mr. Seif and also now Mrs. Amy Watkins who's extremely involved, that although this is an athlete or a former athlete, that our level of communication and advertisement is to make sure that everyone in this community understands that it's for everyone. So that it's not, when you see that it's a, an athlete, that you may think that it may just be for all the sports, and people coming in, but our level of communicating this is to make sure that this is a message that every family should be a part of. It's just coming from somebody who so happens to be a former athlete. So we are gonna work hard in relaying that type of message. Mr. Galetta. I just quickly wanted to mention, while we're uh, recognizing people that were involved in this, I I'd like to recognize Mrs. Siriani from, she's a counselor at uh, yes. Ketchum High School associated with uh, Dutchess County Cape Council on Addiction Prevention and Education. She uh, played a big part in, um, in having this uh, assembly thank brought you. to us as well, so thank you very much. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. 8.01. Are there any amendments to the agenda? <laughs> Ms. Pedro? Yes, we, we uh, have a question because we, uh, we have to return to executive session. So should we do that before the uh, additions to the amendment or before? Uh, before. And, mm -hmm. We don't need to do further action, so we don't have to come back to close the meeting. Yeah, so, so we should, could we do public comment before we leave so that they can leave? Comment, then make a motion to go into effect session and stay for the reason. Um, to adjourn to effect session and adjourn to the next meeting. Thank you. 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 Seeing no one, 9.01, comments from the public. Uh, yes, Marie Johnson again. I just have two quick things I wanted to ask. Um, this week we saw that there was a proposed for the budget, the proposed budget, and it looks like we're going to be right now about 600,000 down. And I'm just wondering if we're gonna add that into our next tax that we're gonna to have to raise. 
And then also regarding the special education development, um, I'm trying to gather some information and I'm hoping somebody can help me guide to get the ratio of numbers of children per grade that are special need versus the total number. And I'm just hoping somebody can get me that information. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak at this time? Seeing no one, do we have a motion to go into executive session? Okay, just a minute. For the, yes. Resolve that the Board of Education does hereby motion to go into, uh, to go, to adjourn to go to executive session for the purpose of discussing matters deemed confidential by, sta by statute and attorney client privilege. The Board plans to discuss the employment history and discipline of a particular employee or employee as well as matters protected by FERPA. Okay, do we have a motion? Mr. Lumi, a second. Mr. Galletta, all those in favor? Unanimous.